Good day everyone! I'm Sophia Joy Enriquez and now I'm going to tackle about human rights-based policy. So, human rights-based policy, it is the relationship between the individual citizens, various groups or sectors of society as claim holders, who have rights to be respected and protected by the police. Also, the police as treaty holders, their obligation is to respect, protect, and fulfill human rights. It is also aims to empower claim holders to claim their rights while strengthening the capacities of duty holders to meet their duties and obligations as human rights protectors. So next, um, I'm going to talk about the characteristics of human rights-based policy. So what are the characteristics of human rights-based policy? First, we have strict observance of police policies and procedures. Human rights-based policy entails the strict observance of police policies and operational procedures. Most, if not all, violation of human rights occur when the police officer do not follow the established policies and procedures. And if the police officer follow the proper procedure, they uphold human rights and they promote justice. For example, um, when a police officer informed the arrested person about his or her Miranda rights. So this police officer following the proper procedure in making arrest, whether it is done with or without a warrant. So next characteristics is adherence to international human rights standards for law enforcement. According to Universal Declaration of Human Rights, Article Number 9, no one shall be subjected to arbitrary arrest, detention, or exile. So, law enforcement officials are obliged to know and to apply the international standards for human rights. And no one shall take advantage of the situation of a detained person to compel him or to confess or to otherwise incriminate himself or another person. The third characteristic is professional competence and courteous service. One of the competence is you need to be emotionally aware. It is very important to every police officer to be emotionally aware, not only to the needs and feelings of others, but you need to be emotionally aware of yourself. And so it is important to have a maximum tolerance. Also, some traits of police as leaders of the community, you need to be approachable and have a genuine interest to other people. Be humble and have a friendly personality that makes people feel comfortable and making the community feel they are important. The fourth characteristic is respect the rule of law and civilian supremacy. It is about treating others in the way that we want to be treated. Respect the rule of law and civilian supremacy is important because if we do not follow the rule of law, we have chaos. Also, we need to respect how our system works, including those who lead us. The rule of law is the basis used in judging whether a country has a good government or not. Therefore, all police officers must always remember Article 2, Section 1 of 1987 Philippine Constitution, which states, sovereignty resides in the people and all government authority emanates from them. The fifth characteristic is pro-democracy and pro-citizen. The police organization must always remain responsive and relevant to the needs of the community, which is the PNP's main clientele. The police are able to learn about the issues and concern that must be addressed at the community level. The full cooperation between the police and the community is required in order to solve the peace and order problem. Next, I'm going to explain the PNP three levels of human rights obligation. First is to respect. It is important to note that respect of human rights remains inviolable over the performance of police duties and functions. Moreover, no one needs to give you these rights and no one is supposed to take them away or deprive you of these rights. Your rights must be respected even as you respect the rights of others. Second is to protect. It is the implementation of laws that provide equal protection to all persons from human rights violations. The third level of PNP 
human rights obligation is to fulfill human rights. It is the act of establishing institutions and implementing systems, mechanisms, or procedures that enable people to claim and to enjoy their rights. Next is the role of police in respecting and protecting human rights. So, um, the PNP motto is to serve and to protect. So, the law enforcement officials play a key role in society, serving and protecting the people and upholding laws. The role is valid at all times. So, the police responsibility is to protect, respect, and to promote basic human rights for every person. Next is the summary of 10 basic international human rights standards for law enforcement. The 10 basic international human rights standards for law enforcement officials were prepared by Amnesty International in association with police officials. It is intended to raise awareness amongst government officials, parliamentarians, journalists, and other non-governmental organizations. It is hoped that the Police authorities will be able to use these 10 basic standards as a starting point to develop detailed guidance for training and monitoring of the conduct of the police agents. And that's all. Thank you.